In today's video, we will be learning about pump types, choosing a pump, and pump characteristic curves. Pumps can be divided into two categories, dynamic pumps and positive di displacement pumps. Uh, positive displacement pumps are generally very high pressure pumps, and they can further divide it into rotary and reciprocating pumps. Reciprocatory pumps are basically of three types, plunger, diaphragm, and uh, piston pumps, whereas rotary pumps can be further divided into gear, vane, and screw pumps. These are basically divided based on their construction type. Uh, dynamic pumps are divided into centrifugal, which are medium head, axial flow, which are low head, and radial flow, which are usually high head. What is the major difference between dynamic pumps and positive displacement pumps? In dynamic pumps, the rotating pump impeller converts the kinetic energy into pressure energy through a rotating impeller and a fluid casing. Whereas in positive displacement pumps, the fluid is directed into a closed volume. These pumps are called positive displacement, displacement pumps because fixed amount of liquid is taken from one end and discharged at the other end in each revolution. This slide shows the basic construction of the different types of pumps. This is the centrifugal pump, pump. Uh, this is the vane pump, this is a, a screw pump, or we can say it a external gear pump. This is a screw pump, this is a lobe pump, and this is a reciprocating piston type pump. So what is the major difference is the, the major difference is that there is a difference in the construction of the impeller. Uh, this slide shows the various uh, pumps available in the industries. And this is the axial flow pump. This is the centrifugal pump. Uh, this is the motor behind the centrifugal impeller. And this is the vertical type pump. Uh, this is the centrifugal pump again and this is the screw pump. So how to choose a pump based on the pump types? So this is the general pump selection diagram which is based on the head and flow rate. This is head given in feet, this is flow rate given in gallons per minute, and this is the head given in meters, and this is the flow rate given in meter cube per hour. So if you are cho you have to choose a high flow rate and a low head pump, you will choose axial flow. And similarly, if you have, want to choose a high head and a low flow rate pump, you will choose a reciprocating pump. Mostly centrifugal pumps are used in the industries. Pump characteristic curves. Here we have a pump characteristic curve showing head and feet and pump efficiency versus the capacity in thousands of gallons per minute. So looking at the pump curve for a specific or a particular impeller, the head curve shows feet of head for a given flow rate. We also need to put the efficiency curve for that uh, impeller. So efficiency is the pump efficiency for a given flow rate. So this shows you the efficiency of the pump versus head for a given flow rate. And you can see that we have the peak efficiency point right at the top of the efficiency curve. If we come down from that peak efficiency point to where it intersects the head curve, we can find that best efficiency point the BEP. The best efficiency point is the flow at which the pump operates at the highest or optimum efficiency for a given impeller diameter. If we come across to the left from that point, we see that that head is about 60 feet. If we come down from that point, we can see that the flow at 60 PSI is approximately 10,500 gallons per minute. 
Well, now if we put the brake horsepower curve on here, we can see the power requirements. Brake horsepower is the power required from the motor to drive the pump at a given head to deliver a given volumetric flow rate. If we draw a line over from the brake horsepower curve from where the flow rate intersects the brake horsepower curve, we see that this requires about 200 horsepower. What will happen if we add two pumps in series and, and what will happen if we add two pumps in parallel? Basically, if we add two pumps in series, then the head is going to add whereas when we connect two pumps in parallel the flow rate increases and head remains the same well now we want to take a look at the difference between series operation and parallel operation when pumps are in series operation where one pump discharges into the suction of another what we see is an increase in head but no increase in flow rate. So series operation will increase the pressure or increase the head, but it will not increase the volumetric flow rate. And here we can see the difference in head. So series operation increases head without increasing the volumetric flow rate. Well, in parallel operation, if we have one pump with its curve displayed here, if we added a second identical pump, the curve would look like this. And what we see with parallel operation is that we have an increase in the volumetric flow rate without increasing the head. Uh, we'll be discussing pump charts for a centrifugal pump in this slide forward. That was. With this chart, we see the brake horsepower plotted at various intervals. As you can see, as the flow rate increases, so does the power requirement. We use this chart to size our motor. For example, if we needed 125 gallons per minute with 18 feet of head, then this is between the 0.75 and the 1 horsepower lines. As this point is above the 0.75 line, this means we can't use a motor of this rating because it will not be able to cope. Therefore, we will have to use a one brake horsepower motor, and we see the performance curve falls completely under this line. So if our head pressure calculation is wrong, then we do have some safety margin. We will be discussing efficiency, net positive suction head, cavitation, and of centrifugal pumps in these slides. Sizes will usually have efficiency displayed in these more complex plot lines. Each line displays the percentage of efficiency. In both charts, you can see that the efficiency varies depending on how you operate the pump. In multiple impeller size charts, we see that the efficiency decreases as the impeller size also decreases. And that's because the gap between the impeller and the pump casing increases. And that will allow water to recirculate in this region and therefore waste energy. The efficiency is the ratio or comparison between the amount of energy going into the pump versus the amount of energy we get out of the pump. So ideally we want this to be as close as possible to the peak for optimal performance. The pump will always lose some power when it converts and transmits this electrical energy into mechanical energy. And this will be lost through the couplings, the bearings, the shaft, the seals, the cooling fan, etc. For example, on this chart, we can see that if the pump provided 125 gallons per minute at 25 feet of head, then it would run at around 67% efficiency, which isn't very good. If the same pump operated at 30 feet of head for 138 gallons per minute, then it would operate at its peak performance of 73%, which is much better. MPSH. This is the required MPSH or net positive suction head pressure. This usually has an upward curve, which means as the pump flow rate increases, we see the MPSH value also increases. We measure this in meters or feet, sometimes kilopascals. The MPSH is the minimum pressure that must be available at the suction inlet of the pump to overcome the entrance losses and avoid cavitation. 
the available pressure at the inlet must therefore be greater than this value. Pump cavitation is where the pressure at the inlet of the pump reaches a low enough point that the water begins to boil. This creates rapidly expanding and collapsing air bubbles which will gradually destroy the surface of the pump and the casing. For this example, if we were to move 150 gallons per minute, then we would require an MPSH value of around 4.9 feet. So what are the flexion factors for the pumps? The main flexion factors for the pumps are the flow rate of the pump, speed requirements, at what speed the pump should flow, and the pressure requirements, power requirements, durability, performance, cost, maintenance, these all are the selection factors based on which we choose a pump. Uh, priming is a, one of the most impost, important phenomena in the pumps. Uh, this is basically in centrifugal pumps and reciprocating pumps we do not require priming. And priming is a process of filling the pump with water so that there are no air bubbles, so there are no gaps present in the pump. It is the process in which the impeller of a centrifugal pump will get fully submerged in a liquid without any air trap inside. This is especially required when there is the first startup, but it is advisable to start the pump only after priming. Uh, these are the forward, backward and radial centrifugal impellers. Uh, forward uh, curved blades are with have blade angle greater than 90 degree. Radial blade curves have blade angles at 90 degree and backward curved blades have blade angle less than 90 degree. And if we see the head and discharge curve, the head increases with the increase in the discharge in forward curve blades and radial curve blades. In radial blades, the head remains coarser, so we're constant with increase in discharge. And in backward curve blades, the head decreases with increase in the discharge or the flow rate. Similarly, if we see the power, more power is required for forward curve blades, less power is required for backward curve blades with increase in flow rate. Choosing a centrifugal pump type based on the specific speed. So specific speed is defined as, is given according to this formula where N is RPM, Q is the flow rate, and H is the head. So if you see in this uh, slide, the radial vane pumps are have impeller which have, which have greater dia and with these are thinner in size as compared to axial flow uh, pumps which are in which the impeller dia is very less. This is the axis of the rotation and this is the specific speed. So if you according to this formula, the specific speed comes up uh, to be 15,000 RPM, uh, 15,000, then you will choose axial flow pumps. And if the specific speed comes around 500, then you will choose radial type centrifugal pumps. Uh, this slide helps you identify the pump characteristic curves for different specific speeds. So if you see in this slide, these are radial flow pumps, these are mixed flow pumps, and these are axial flow pumps. Moving towards the pump comparison between centrifugal and reciprocating pumps, Centrifugal. centrifugal are simple in impression and construction, whereas reciprocating are complicated. Centrifugal are less in, less in weight for a given discharge, and the reciprocating 
the weight is more uh, for a given discharge centrifugal are suitable for large discharge and smaller heads whereas reciprocating pumps are suitable for less discharge and higher heads there is less wear and tear in centrifugal pumps as compared to the reciprocating pumps the maintenance cost is less in centrifugal as compared to reciprocating the centrifugal can pumps can run at a very high speed as compared to the reciprocating the delivery is continuous in centrifugal whereas in reciprocating the delivery is pulsating centrifugal needs priming and whereas reciprocating do not need priming the efficiency of centrifugal pump is less as compared to reciprocating Centrifugal can handle dirty water and reciprocating cannot handle dirty water. The noise of uh, centrifugal pumps is less as compared to the reciprocating and they can handle all types of fluids whereas reciprocating cannot handle viscous fluids. So this is the pressure and flow rate curve of a centrifugal pump and a positive displacement pump or reciprocating pump this shows that low viscosity uh, low viscosity fluids and this shows the high viscosity fluids similarly this shows that high viscosity fluids have less uh, pressure as compared to the low viscosity fluids these have high pressure in centrifugal pumps similarly high viscosity fluids have greater flow rate and low viscosity fluids have uh, lesser flow rate if you see the curves of the centrifugal pump it is as the flow rate increases the pressure decreases whereas in positive displacement pumps the flow rate remains constant uh, for any high pressure Thank you very much. If you have any questions, you can email me at hassanifti at gmail.com. Thank you.